Oh, hello. Do you think the Big Brother's watching? Or that the Illuminati is planning to take over the world? Have you happened to have an encounter with a space alien today? Well, if the answer to those questions is yes, then grab your hat. This is Tinfoil Hat Time. Welcome back to Tin Foil Hat Time. So today, we are going to talk about the lost sheeple. The lost sheeple of social media land. The lost sheeple who have given up Facebook, decided social media is probably not for them, at least not for the most part. So that's what we're going to be talking about here on the tinfoil hat time. <laughs> of course, find me on Facebook. There's a common expression. Everyone assumes you have Facebook. Entire youth groups and churches operate only on Facebook. Entire clubs now, Facebook. It's so prevalent that on the iPhone and on the Android phone, making up over 95% of the smartphone market, both pre-assume you have a Facebook account. Of course, there's other accounts there too. Facebook and Twitter are common to both of those. But the thing is, there's some downsides to social media. And 2016 and 2017 seem to be the year where social media is starting to... People are realizing the silliness. Now, I saw some articles actually blaming the election. Huh? Get over it. Trump's in office. Let's just get back to productivity, please. <laughs> um, now, the thing is, what is social media? One of the challenges is social media is now so pervasive. Social media is so pervasive that one of my contracts requires that we use a platform called Toggle to enter our hours. And Toggle an hour entry place to keep track of time cards that are trying to turn it into a social network. Like, I was part of another contract where we use ClearSlide to do screen sharing. They were trying to turn that into a social network. Stop turning everything into a social network. Social networking is not necessarily good. There's places for it. But a lot of times, social networking, it's for the birds. It's just for the birds. So what is a social network? I will define a social network as a media or website service that contains uh, interactions or connections between other groups or users on that platform. That's what I'd say is a social network. Obviously, if we talk about fast food, McDonald's is the first name that comes to mind. Never mind that Subway is, I think, the fastest growing franchise and possibly even more stores. Not sure where their uh, income ratios lie, but um, we talk about social networks and automatically Facebook, 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 Facebook. Definitely not the first one. <laughs> there was MySpace before that. Um, but social media is all around us and it's very difficult to live in this age and not have some type of social media interaction. You know, even here on YouTube is a social media interaction. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, and on. Lots and lots of social media sites. And I can say that... Social media is something we have to be very cautious of. And we're going to look at today uh, about the title, The Lost Sheeple. So, of course, this is like a multiple layered play on words. Um, a sheeple, of course, is the people who just do whatever. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> newsletter sign up. <laughs> it's like you walk into a store. Would you like a newsletter? Oh, sure. Why not? We'll send you coupons. Never mind that. By sending us coupons, and we might give you a, uh, a way a few free things, but we're going to get you here five times more than you would have come here if we didn't. That's what's behind it. It's about data collection. 
stores having their own apps. It's about data collection. Social media ultimately is about data collection. So the sheeple are the people that just don't think they just go through society. They listen to all of the advice. They don't question anything. You know, I'm not saying that we want to totally question absolutely everything to the uh, end time, end power degree. But what I am saying is we should have a little bit of conscious thought as we are navigating through our life. Otherwise, we get to the end of our life, we look back, we look at our diet, realize that the USDA has not been about giving Americans a healthy diet, it's been about supporting the Department of Agriculture. Department of, Department of Agriculture primarily produces grains, which are not really good for us to eat. Cows give grains to cows to make them fat. USDA gives grains to us, we get fat. And it's the same thing for a lot, a lot of different things. You know, user data, it's the same way for internet providers. It's the same. I mean, there's there's so many things that if you dig into, you can look back and go, maybe the experts don't know what's right. And I will once again refer you to watch the nutritional talk by Tom Naughton called Diet Health and the Wisdom of Crowds. And you can apply that model to so many other things. And our goal here is simply on tinfoil hat time, it is about thinking. It's not about conspiracy theory. I mean, I could show you the, the clip, you know, that famous clip that, that CIA loves Facebook because people give all this stuff, which is very true on the one hand, but that clip came from the onion. Can we stop spreading that around? I'm not here about conspiracy theories. I'm here about living consciously in our world where we are. All right. So Facebook is the most common social media site. So we're going to start out by talking about Facebook misadventures. Or maybe I should say misadventures in Facebook land. I don't know. So Facebook has done a, a, a little bit of uh, unscrupulous things over the years. Um, obviously boosting likes. This one just came out recently. Uh, it turns out that if you sent a private message to somebody with a link in it, Facebook would go to that link. They were not only were they snooping on what you were sending, but if there was a like button on the page where that link was, then it would depress that like button. And in theory, what would happen is the likes would go up two times for the like button on that page. Now, with that being said, um, I looked back because I wasn't sure about all that. So I went ahead in preparation for this. I watched a whole lot of people talking about their social media lives. And I watched a whole lot of other things where people were, um, you know, just abandoning Facebook and, you know, in droves, whatever. And um, so I actually logged in my Facebook account, which I really never do. And neither does the kitty who wanted to come up and hear all about Facebook. Don't use Facebook. It sucks. Okay. Um, and so I logged into that Facebook account and I went down and, you know, I went, I looked at my friends list. I think I had 137 friends on there and I, I neutered that list. Um, I went through there and if I hadn't talked to you in the last, last year or two, you just got removed from that. You know, and if you're a friend of mine watching this on Facebook, no offense. I just haven't heard from you in a long time. And frankly, I'm not about to do it on Facebook. Give me a call, shoot me an email. It's not like you can't find me. Um, but I neutered that down to just the, the closest people. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that down here that the, at the end of the video here. Um, but with all that being said, I went down and there's a page where you can see what you've liked. And there is a bunch of crap in there. I have never liked. I would never like, I don't even like, I think I probably just sent some controversial link to somebody and they're like, Oh, you must like it. Ah! Yeah. I'd like to say some harsh words to Facebook right now. Um, but I'm not going to, um, so basically, uh, basically as, as we are looking at and, and navigating through, uh, through the social media mess, Facebook is doing a lot of goofy things with their like platform. Of course they came out like, Oh, we're not doing some of this stuff, but you know, back in 2012, they said we weren't selling any data or anything, but of course they came out later on and said, Oh, we've stopped doing that. So which is it? You're not doing it or you stopped doing it. That was a question. All right. Now, mass data collection with Facebook is, is a scary thing because even if you are not a Facebook user, they are building up a profile on you. It's like the, the evil 007 villain. Mass surveillance. All right. So 
If you log into Facebook, they store one type of cookie on your computer. If you log out of Facebook, there's another cookie, but it's still tied to your ID. If you've never had a Facebook account, they're still tracking all sorts of things, and they have these little things called ghost profiles, where if they seem to make a connection to you, like somebody posts your picture somewhere on Facebook and gives you an actual name, they'll extrapolate all that, and they produce what are called shadow, uh, shadow profiles, not ghost profiles is the actual term. So they build a shadow profile, which is essentially just a profile uh, on you that when you create a Facebook account, it just auto-populates with all this stuff it already knows about you. Now, if that's not scary enough, if it's not scary enough that they're tracking all this data, they're even tracking even more data because a lot of websites use what we call a Facebook tracking pixel. And you can find these on websites. If, uh, if you go in to look at the source of a site, you might be able to find these Facebook tracking profiles uh, if somebody happens to be using them. And I'm seeing if uh, any of the open tabs that I have right now actually have, have one of these or not. Of course, it's really hard to tell because um, I pull up some articles about Facebook and so I have Facebook in their title. Um, but what I'm looking for is um, they will add a, uh, some, some groups will add a one by one pixel ping file that what happens, and this is nothing new, this, this type of thing has been used for data tracking for a long time. What happens is when you load the site, your site goes and it loads that ping file from the server and then it attaches a PHP variable to the back side of it. And then Facebook can use that to cross track other sites that you use. And the controversy is even if you've never used Facebook, they're still collecting all this data. And that is the big problematic part because it's one thing if you've created a profile and pretended to read the terms and conditions. It's another thing altogether if you've never done that. And if you're trying to produce this profile, if they're making a profile on you and collecting and creating these shadow profiles and you've never agreed to their terms and conditions to begin with, now this has been the root of some lawsuits. And I'm not even sure where all those are, are going right now. Um, but basically, there are all sorts of fun ways that Facebook has to track people. And if all that wasn't enough, they also broker with data brokers. So it's not enough to collect the data you willingly give them. It's not enough to collect the data that they extrapolate from what your friends give them. It's not enough to extrapolate the data from the sites you visit, whether you're logged in or not, whether you have a Facebook or not. It's not enough for them to create a shadow profile. They also work with data brokers, including all the major cre um, uh, uh, credit reporting agencies to build a bigger profile all about you. So this isn't anything crazy and conspiracy. This is from Facebook's help page. How does Facebook work with data providers? Yes, many, many businesses today work with third parties like um, Axion, Data Logic, which is Oracle, Epsilon, Experian, Quantum. Um, so they're working with these people. Oh yeah, for new cars, blah, 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 to target ads, blah, blah, blah. No, to steal your data and to have even more of it. All right, transparency. Here's their transparency. This is what makes this thing legal, this transparency clause. When you see a Facebook ad, you can click the drop down menu, then choose, why am I seeing this? This will bring you to a page that identifies some of the reasons you're seeing the ad, including whether you are part of an audience that was provided to Facebook by our partners huh so they're now even targeting you based on things you didn't give them this is nothing new oh within the control box you can say oh I don't want to see that ad or from that advertiser you know what that does though is that gives them even more information even more information here's why it's the same thing if you go on to Google and you say, okay, I do not want Google to show me ads. So what you do is you have to go to a special site on Google's page and click a button. All that does is stores a browser cookie on your browser. They're still collecting all the data. They're just not sending you the targeted ads. I want the option to stop collecting my data. Stop, stop, stop. And so we're going to talk about that. Sorry if you're listening on headphones, blasted your ears out, but I get passionate on these tinfoil hat times. So here is all of the companies they work with in all of the various countries here in the United States. We're looking at, oh, look at this, TransUnion and Experian. Look at that, a couple credit reporting agencies. 
credit reporting agencies selling data to Facebook. You know that uh, Facebook issued a patent to set algorithms to compare you to your friends and literally they developed a patent to base a credit score on an individual based upon his association on his friend list. All right, let's all just abandon Facebook now, <laughs> okay? Because I got news for you, you know, there's a couple people on there that, that I've known back since then. Now I got rid of a lot of people that, that I've simply just known from high school. If I haven't talked to you like since pre-college days or pre-grad school days, I probably, you know, wiped you off of my Facebook page. You know, I don't want to know what the credit scores of the backwoods hicks are where I went to high school. I don't want to know. And I know some of them are like not necessarily good people upstanding with their money. I do not want a line on my credit score to be in any way related to anybody I'm merely connected to on Facebook. Wowzers. Oh, enhanced disclosures. Our data providers have agreed to explain what types of information they collect and what their policies are relating to that information. Many of our partners have developed tools to help people see information that the partner has associated with them and exercise control over that data. <laughs> you don't have any control over that data. That's the problem. They just let it all out. Let it all out. All right. Uh, so with that being said, um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, keep going. That was mass data collection. Of course, now that they have mass collected all of your data, it's time to share it all. We're going to scoop up every bit about all of these people so we can be nice and share it. We're going to share your data. Sharing is caring, isn't it? Sharing is caring. We're, Facebook's just going to share your data. With who? Well, they share your data with ad networks. Now they're not shipping out a big dossier of all of your information to, to all of the ad networks they're working with, half of which are slimy, scammy, and junky. Um, however, those by allowing the APIs to connect, those companies can indeed extract all the data that they want because you've told Facebook in the terms and conditions you're, they're allowed to do that because they can share that with third parties. Um, they'll also share it with, with other people like, um, now at this point in time, there's a whole lot of, uh, of reports about backdoor deals behind government agencies and Facebook. Um, I'm not going to comment on those because, um, you know, there, there's a lot of misinformation spreading around. There's a lot of things from, from the genuine certifiably crazy people, um, that, that really legitimately need to be wearing this hat. So I'm not going to talk about all those. Of course, there's the famous, uh, famous clip with, you know, uh, the one guy like, yes, we're very happy with, you know, Facebook because people give all this information. And literally some people have, have used that saying that, um, uh, saying that, uh, you know, that was legitimate. Well, that actually came from the onion, which is a satirical thing. You want to talk about fake news? Why don't we get sites like that off the internet? You know, because now this is a legitimate satirical, openly fake news site, but their little clips are being integrated into things and people are thinking it's serious. Then the conspiracy theorists get all confused because they don't want to go back and figure all that out and it just creates one giant headache. Now, are they really collecting that data? I think so. I think they got ways to collect it. I think they probably do have backdoor deals. I don't have any primary literature to say that. I will say that officially on the record, according to Facebook, is that over the last couple of years, the number of data requests, legal data requests from government agencies has spiked tremendously. But it's still into the levels of like, I think, I think over 2015 or 2016, whenever that article was from, um, they said that I think it was still only like 67,000. Now there's a billion Facebook users. So 67,000 is not a whole lot, but you know, that is just the official government request. Are they doing more than that? Mm, I don't know. I, I probably think so. Um, but even beyond that, you know, Facebook is starting to open up more and more of your profile to the public. In fact, they kind of do it randomly They're like, oh, we've updated the, pro the, the privacy policies. We've gone ahead and made everything public. You can opt and change everything back to private if you want. But, you know, because they just 
sharing is caring. They've collected all this data on you. Now they just want to give it out. They want to give it out to the advertisers. They want to give it out to the internet for anybody to find. It's insanity. But that's Zuckerberg's plan. Open global connectivity, unless it's me. You cannot record me. You cannot, I mean, if you can see pictures of Zuckerberg's desk, he's got tape over his camera. He's got tape over his microphone. Um, the guys at Terms and Conditions may apply. Um, they actually did some recordings of him. He did not like that. Like, oh, are you recording? Oh, please stop recording. Yeah, yeah see, I'm getting so passionate. I just wanted to swear again. I want to show my favorite finger there, Mark. Um, and so they're collecting all this data and now they're just opening it all up because who doesn't want all your private information on Google? I mean, come on. What are you, crazy? You know, I mean... With all your public information on Google, you can now have a search warrant taken out to see who searched for your name on Google. I mean, come on. Um, so officially, though, the number of law enforcement requests has gone up, but you don't need a law enforcement request if you're putting all your stuff um, visibly uh, available for someone to see. And that's kind of what's happening in, in a lot of, of uh, police forces. You know, stupid gangster thugs don't even know how to secure their thing down. So they're like, yeah, we're going to rob the place this time. So the police just show up. Okay. And they literally watch and they wait for them to rob the place and they arrest them as they come out the door because, you know, we don't want to arrest people before they commit the crime. Come on, we have to catch them in the act of committing the crime, which is good. I, I agree with that. I, I think that, that pre crime is dangerous. We need to not go there. Um, but it might get to that point. So anyway, though, what's happening is police sources are infiltrating Facebook groups, just like being part of the group because, oh, yeah, I'm in the group. Yeah, I'm in the group. I'm in the group. I'm going to talk some smack and get in the group. And then they're just figuring out where the robberies are. And that's what I call low-hanging fruit dumb criminals. And they deserve to get off the street. Um, but basically, you know, law enforcement are indeed using a lot of the social media platforms for searching publicly available information. So the Onions report is actually pretty much completely true. Um, and if Zuckerberg has his way, it's going to be totally true because we are in the form of social media, putting out our birthday, putting out our address, putting out our present location. Like if you're out taking a vacation, look at me, look at me at the beach. Wait, wait, wait. One guy really wanted to get off, get off of it for the duck face. So Okay, <laughs> kiss the camera. Mm -hmm. Doing your, your selfies out on the beach. Yeah, like, mm, digging it at the Caribbean. The robber's like, yeah, I'm digging here in the Caribbean too, baby. <laughs> okay, we're putting our current locations out there. And then it's not even just for our friends. It's for the crazy casual guys. Like, you realize you have, like, you, the average Facebook user has people on there that they met at a party one time. You're broadcasting to them when you're not home. It's even worse because if you're just taking th pictures with your cell phone, uploading them, all that geotag information is still on there. Someone can actually take it down. I didn't pull up the reports for this, but I remember seeing it not too long ago. I linked it on a previous video somewhere. Um, but uh, what happened is a news agency just grabbed a couple random citizens in the community and just from looking at their Facebook profiles that weren't properly secured down, they came and gave them a giant dossier of this is when you leave for work, this is when your child leaves for work, this is where your child's bedroom is in your house, here's your whole floor plan, um, you know, here's the bus, here's the school, here's the schedule. It was a scary amount, all from geolocation information on the phone. You know, you can track all that stuff. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that. Um, and, you know, that's kind of going on. So first they're collecting all the data, then they seem to be making it public because sharing is caring and let's just do it. As long as it's not me. I mean, come on, this is this is digital world, uh, what is it, Nimba, not in my backyard. You know, Zuckerberg has no problem collecting everybody else's information and making it public, but you cannot take his picture. He will not let you. Sharing is caring. <laughs> So that's Facebook shenanigans. Those in and of itself, if, if you still want to stay on Facebook, God bless you. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you at the end of the video what my choices and all this happen to be, at least for now. Um, no guarantees are going to stay this way. Uh, but we're going to talk about... Um, the, the title of this, of course, is, is, is The Lost Sheeple. Of course, The Lost Sheep is the sheep that wanders away from the flock. This is The Lost Sheeple of social media. And so The Lost Sheeple of, of social media, I watched, I probably watched like 50 videos of people who quit uh, 
Facebook in general, you know, in particular, and social media in general over the last week or so while I was preparing for this here. And I kind of collected the most common recurring themes as to why people quit, not just Facebook, but social media in general. And so we're going to look at reasons to get off of social media. Um, so, <clears throat> reasons. The top of the list, um, and these two kind of go hand in hand, uh, so just listing them both, wasted time slash addiction. I mean, there's people that, they'll just Facebook left and right, checking your status every 20 minutes, seeing what's going on. You can't even watch a movie. And one, one person explained in his video, and I didn't even write all these guys' videos down, but I probably watched most of them on YouTube out there. But, you know, he's like, I got to the point where I'm watching a movie. I'm satisfied watching a movie with my family, but I'm still reaching for my phone and doing the social media thing. And I told the story before of, of a family. I, you know, years ago, I used to go to their house and, and they, were a, they were a family that was so focused on family. We'd have dinner and then we'd clear off the table and we'd set up board games and we'd play and we'd talk. And the last time I was over at their house, I was so uncomfortable because everyone in the family now has their own iPhone. Like, and I'm sitting here, like we, after dinner, the table didn't even get cleared. Everyone just gets their phones and the entire family is like this. I was crazy. I don't put games and stuff on here. This thing for me is just a basic tool. I check my email on it. I do some web searches on it. A couple other little basic tasks. Um, but I do not use this as a big distraction. It's not a huge distraction in my life. Um, I don't put games on there. I don't put any social media on there. There's nothing on there. And the fact that this family could go to an active, engaged family playing board games to just... It's like a wonder drool that you show up. Um, but that's where our society is moving. And time-wasting and addiction is core to that. No successful person spends a significant amount of time on social media. Okay. Now, um, some people wanted to check out of compulsion. Some people it was out of boredom. And the unfortunate thing is when it gets to the point where it's just become sheer habit, where every 10 minutes you pick up your phone and search for it, you don't realize you checked Facebook or at name X social media site. Most of the videos I watched pertain to Facebook because it's the most popular, but, um, I'm talking here about social media in general. Um, so, of course, the addiction and those that said that, that they want to get off Facebook because of the addiction, I mean, they came through and, and were even talking about basic withdrawal symptoms. When you have basic withdrawal symptoms because you do not check your status update, you have a problem. Get some help. Get off that social media. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. All right. Uh, the next thing is false affirmation. And I actually wrote a little note down here. You know that pornography is a false substitute for intimacy? But when you don't open up in your life, you become susceptible to that to that influence. And I had a friend that that uh, had said like romance novels are like porn for women because you know men are visually stimulated in general, women are phys are emotionally stimulated in general. And we were talking about this in the context of the uh, the series Twilight, the books. And of course, I uh, I have not read the books. Um, I don't generally read much fiction at all. Um, but as I'm reading through, uh, as I was reading through some some credible sources, they're saying you know the female character in Twilight book that you're meant to see and make that connection to is so generic and so bland that any young female could drop herself in the role as the female in that book. But every male in that book are so described to the nth degree, you have no choice but to fall in love with them through the course of the story. And that's kind of how this works. Well, Facebook itself, I wrote a little note on my pad here, is Facebook and in, you know, in social media in general, is this porn for false affirmations? Is this not our way of saying my life feels empty and so I have to put up a bunch of stuff on Facebook and see how many people like it and share it and link it and comment on it.
Are we seeking that type of affirmation, which is a false affirmation? I'd rather somebody go around and put your arm around you and way to go, man. You did a good job rather than share it with a bunch of nebulous people over the world. And many former social media people were saying that they were using social media so that they felt like they were getting affirmation, but it was empty. It was fake. And it was all based on a narrow scope of life. And then you had the one-sided life. Many people on social media will only post from one point. You rarely see a person who will post the good and the bad. This is the guy that when things are going great, they got the new girlfriend, they got the new boyfriend, happy-go-lucky life is awesome, blah, 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 blah. And then you don't hear from them for three weeks. That's when they broke up with their boyfriend or girlfriend and life kind of sucks right now. They're not doing anything. But then you get the flip side. You get the person that all you ever see in here is, my life sucks. My life is horrible. Ah, feel pity on me, everybody. So you get this one-sided life mentality. People generally will not post the good and the bad online. They will generally post either the good or either the bad. Rarely one side. And so what ends up happening is you end up, you end up, um, getting this false sympathy because, you know, you have a friend who's supposedly your friend and they're like, oh, my life is falling apart. And, and what heartless soul will not come by and say, oh, I feel for you, praying for you, XOXO, you know. But then on the flip side, the guys that are always like, you know, selfing at the Bahamas for the robber to know when I'm not home. And then you look at there and you go, oh, the Bahamas, I so want to go. My life sucks. <laughs> You know, and those are this dichotomy that we get inside of social media. It's just so one sided life. People will either post all the great stuff and make you feel like crap or they'll post all the bad stuff and give you a false sense of wanting some type of sympathy or empathy for them. And it's, and it's just just produces this bipolarness in your own heart, and your own mind. <laughs> get off it, you know. Um, the next thing that uh, came up in the common list is shallow relationships. So, um <clears throat> This is the one where people, like some people fill up their social networks with any acquaintance. Like I bumped into you at the mall. Whoops, I'm sorry. Are you on Facebook? You know, I mean, I was looking over some, some people that I had on Facebook the other day and I just had this little general thing. Like if you had more than like 600 people on your friend list, you're done <laughs> because, because Anybody on there could see the friend of your friends. And that means 600 random people that you probably don't even know who they are can see your profile. You know, how a lot of people have their things set up. And <clears throat> so basically it ends up being shallow lives because you meet these people once or twice, and I'm equally guilty of this. You, you drop them in your Facebook page, and then, you know, they can see, and, and, and we'll get to that one in a minute. Actually, we're going to get to that one next. But what happens is you get this this shallow or even non-existent relationship and it interferes with you having a real life. You're spending so much time coddling these false relationships that you're just never really, never really getting the full out of life. And you know, take it from somebody, I, I've never had any desire to travel around the world, but I've had a lot of desire to travel around the country. And there's really only a few states in this country I've not been in. And this is an amazingly gorgeous country. And, you know, on my other computer, my, my desktop pictures are all various places taken. You know, northeast, northwest, whatever, deserts, you know, deserts, lakes, streams, mountains, you know, you name it. I've probably been there. Um, you know, it, it's gorgeous. Um, but I'd rather be living life than sitting there in a digital world wondering who's doing what on Facebook or even worse, who commented on my post. I don't care. Um, and this leads us right into the next one. You know, you bump into the guy at the mall. He is now your Facebook friend um, because, you know, you had a rough encounter. You look somebody in the eye, so he's got to be your Facebook friend. And so now you're sharing your personal life with strangers. Because the thing is, is in real life, the way we, we manage our friendships in real life, you meet somebody and, and you, might first, you might first go out and just get to know the person just out and about. You're not going to like, hey, come on over to my house. Why don't you spend the night and whatever? You know, you might wake up in the morning and everything's gone. <laughs> 
you know? And I've had encounters like that. I mean, there's, um, you know, I, I was out for a jog uh, a couple years ago. In fact, it was it was like within the first month of moving back to to the town I'm in now. And I'm out for a jog. And this guy stops me. Oh, you like exercising, blah, blah, blah. Let's, you know, whatever. And and so, you know, we, we trade phone numbers. So I guess I, I'm an outgoing guy. I'll meet with people. Why not? Well, you know, good thing I, I didn't, he didn't even cue him into where I live because he ended up being a weirdo nutcase. But I kind of figured that out having coffee with him, you know. So you have coffee with a guy and he's just one of those people that's like, yeah, I just, no, I just don't ever care to see you again. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're crazy. Well, can you imagine if I was a social media? I, oh, yeah, here, find me on Facebook. Oh, yeah, here's whatever. Well, I would have just given a boatload of my personal life to some crazy random psychopath that's out there. But how many times do we add people? Because here's the thing in the social media world, there is no d degree of friendship. There is no like, this guy's a level one friend, but this guy's a level five friend. Maybe someone wants to make a Facebook page or a social media site like that. I don't know. Um, have fun with the idea. I want nothing to do with it. Um, but they're either in or they're out. You're either on my friends list or off my friends list. If you're on my friends list, you can see everything in my profile that, that I've said you could see. And there is no split sharing multiple permission type thing. And so what ends up happening is you end up sharing your deeply personal life with people who end up being total strangers. Because there are people that I looked at my friends list the other day as I was preparing for this. And I'm like, I met this person one time three years ago. I've never talked to them again. They were on my Facebook page. Now, three years ago, I wasn't like all over social media, but I was a lot more loose with social media than I am now. And, you know, so I'm like, oh, yeah, I met somebody. Yeah, they're friends on Facebook now, whatever. And then, like, that gave that person access to everything. And I don't know anything about them. They could be a psychopathic stalker for all I know. You know, and they can now see all my pictures. They can see all the status updates. They can see a lot of things on that site. And so sharing your life with a personal stranger is why a lot of people uh, left. Um, a lot of people left because of sheer boredom. Like Facebook used to be somewhat exciting. Um, you know, when I first got on Facebook, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but when I first got on Facebook, Facebook actually had some interesting things to say. You know, I could get on there and I could be like, yeah, you know, so-and-so, some trip, awesome, cool, you know, whatever, and you'd comment, there's a lot more. What is Facebook now? And I meant to log in, you know, just to see what's on the feed here to give an example. But, you know, I see right now, I see crazy political posts. I see crazy, there's crazy political posts. I see um, um, clickbait articles. I see targeted advertising. I see multi-level marketing pitches. I see clickbait crap. I mean, there is no content there that is worth anything of don't don't forget memes 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 i don't need to see more memes thank you very much i think i've seen enough memes to last a couple of lifetimes so it's gotten boredom boredom is actually cited by a lot of people now another one which is interesting um social media narrows your worldview and this is a fascinating thing it has to do with cookies and algorithms because in all of this targeting you, what ends up happening is it starts to even feed you everything that you want and it narrows your point of view. So here's a fun experiment. If you have two computers, do it on two different computers, that works best. But if you don't have two computers, use two different web browsers. Now you cannot sign into Google to do this. You have to use Google as your search engine, which is something I don't like to do, okay? But you get logged into, uh, you go onto google.com, make sure you're not signed in. You do not, cannot be signed in to do this. You have two different web browsers. On one web browser, you do all conservative type posts, like conservative type searches, pro-conservative searches. You're talking about um, anti-abortion. You're talking about Republican stuff. You're talking about, about God. You're talking about uh, anti-homosexual marriage stuff, okay? You're talking about all this kind of, of far-right stuff. And then on the other browser, you go quite to the opposite. You do all this uh, pro-homosexual stuff. You do all this all this pro-choice. You do all this democratic looking up. You do all of these things, keeping these two web browsers completely separate. Do this for about a month on Google. Spend a good hour or so. And in a month's time, 
You're going to pull up both web browsers. You're going to do the same exact search term on both of them, and you're going to see completely different results. Because Google is now starting to feed you, based upon your history and the shadow profile it created, it's going to feed you the results that it thinks you want to see. And that's what social media does. And what ends up happening is we become so narrow-minded because everything that's not indirectly, they, they've been keeping track of everything we've been clicking on, everything we like, everything we've been watching more and more and more of, they're giving us more and more of that. And what they're doing is keeping us in segregated groups. Now, I don't usually go on and, and, and watch a whole lot of anonymous videos, but there was one that, uh, that, uh, came on at the beginning of the year, and I forget what it was, but they gave either it was like seven or nine uh, things that the elites do. Anonymous always talks about the elites. The elites do to maintain control over the population. And the f scary thing is, I just like loved that video. It was total, so totally awesome. Uh, but one of the things they said is the elites will keep you segregated. It does not matter. They do not care if you are pro-choice or or um, you know pro-life. It does not matter to them. All that matters is that you have an opinion. Being in the middle is where they don't want you to be because it means you're critically thinking. Okay? They want you on one end. They don't care which end. They just want you on an end because they want to keep the society separated. That's according to what that video is saying with the elites. That's the problem, though, is that social media will narrow your worldviews. It keeps on feeding you back the same information that it has determined you want to see. And what ends up happening is you lose the ability to dialogue with the opposing viewpoints. And that is the epitome of what discussion is. In fact, there is a Adventures in Odyssey out there, and I want to say it is called third degree. It is on volume 21. I'm trying to pull it up real quick here. Um, it's on 21. Yes, it is called third degree. And the cool thing about this episode is, is um, two of the main characters, Bernard and Eugene, who are kind of opposites of each other, are taking this big road trip. And they're getting in a lot of discussions along the way. And then there's several episodes of this. This is right when, when was it Hal, Hal Smith, I think, who played the old John Avery Whitaker, had passed away. And they're trying to figure out what do we do. And so they had these guys go on a road trip for like a whole album, which kind of gave them, you know, a, a few albums to, to figure this out. And then, of course, they sent him out to the Middle East. But in the middle, on third degree, what happens is they end up stuck in a little town in Colorado. And they both end up in a giant group of people that share their exact viewpoints. And they both come to this conclusion that if I'm perpetually surrounded by people of my own viewpoints, I go nowhere in life. It shuts down your thinking. You have to be considering other viewpoints. If I am a deeply committed Christian, which I am, I have to be open to discussions with people of other faiths. I have to be. Now, I'm not going to say they're going to change my mind because I'm, I'm pretty pig-headed on my Bible. But I would at least like the opportunity to have the discussion, and I would like if they had the same. And I'd like to be able to come to the table. But what social media does is it narrows your worldview because it keeps you isolated into the pockets of your own people's opinions, and you end up... It's basically like inbreeding. You inbreed your own thoughts to the point where if anyone even comes close from the other one, you end up like this giant hydrophobic cell pushing it away. I'm sorry, I'm a scientific geek. The word just came out. Um, segregating us into our own opinions and viewpoints is a bad thing. But that's exactly what social media does to us. And then, of course, the, one of the last things people commented on the most was being sold. Okay, if you do not pay for the service, you are the product being sold. And many of these companies, they're offering all these free platforms merely to collect your data so they can sell it to an ad revenue. Okay, now some of these cases, like for example, YouTube will split the ad revenue. <laughs> Facebook won't. Other ones won't. Um, so those are your compelling reasons. Real quickly again, because that was long. Time, wasted time slash addictions. False affirmations, a one-sided um, opinions of lives, deeply shallow relationships, sharing personal life with strangers, complete boredom, narrowing of your worldview, and your private data is being collected and sold and shared. Those are good reasons to stay off of social media. All right. Now, I'm not all anti-social media. If I was, I would certainly not be doing a YouTube video. Um, and then I starting to think, you know, what are some of the reasons a person might keep social media or create social media? So this is where I thought back about 
about Facebook. Now, Zuckerberg was coding out the initial bit of Facebook when I was still in grad school, and uh, I was in grad school out in um, out in Pennsylvania, and then I moved because you know typically what happens is if you want a good job, you generally have to be willing to move, and that's a scary part of our society that you have to be willing to ship up and in, in our current economy, you have to be willing to ship up and go to the other half of the world if you want to work in many cases. And so I had to ship up and go to the other half of the country. But I had a lot of really good deep friends and I travel a lot and so I was taking a lot of pictures and initially just emailing out the pictures. Well, it turned out that every person that I was emailing pictures to was on Facebook. And so I decided, sure, let's go and do a Facebook page that way I can just put the pictures up there and then everyone's going to see them and people can comment on their own, whatever, whatever, whatever. And that's really why I got a Facebook account to begin with. And of course it helped that I mentor youth. And at that time, Facebook was really big. I think it still is, but really big among youth. And so it you know, gave me an extra avenue to, to check up on and communicate with the kids that I mentored and which was a significant amount of them. And so, you know, I, I learned a, a lot of good reasons to keep Facebook. And then I stopped and thought, you know, should I just kill my Facebook account? So I looked at my all, all these stats. Do I waste time or am I addicted to Facebook? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I jump on Facebook if I need to contact somebody. It's like, oh, bummer. I need to find, oh, you know what? He's on Facebook. Okay, yeah, let me go over there. Um, <laughs> of course, they're making it harder and harder to not, to be able to send somebody a direct message without downloading another app. When it gets to that point, I'm done. Um, of course, it's already there on the phone, so I don't even have it on any of those. So I don't have any, any issues with wasting time or addiction with, with Facebook, and I'm really not on any other social media either other than YouTube. Um, false affirmation, uh, no, I really don't post anything, don't really care, um, nor do I really necessarily want that. If yeah, I'll tell you, there's people that I kind of want to know what's going on in my life. Yeah, I'll call them on the phone um, or I'll go hang out with them, you know, and that's that's the thing. Um I, I have no desire to see one life to people, and so I don't even, I'm not even there. Shallow relationships. Now, these ones here, shallow relationships and sharing personal life with strangers. This is what I did the other day. I just went on there and just thrashed anybody. If you were not a close friend of mine at some point in time, you got thrashed from my contact list. If you're a friend of mine watching the video and that happened to you, sorry, um, you know, give me a call. We'll talk, and, and I don't know, I may or may not add you back because I don't really care. Um, and then boredom. I'm not really bored with Facebook because well, no, I'm not there. <laughs> I got other things to do. Um, is it narrow my worldview? No, I don't post enough on there for them to do that. And sold data. We're going to discuss this one later. So reasons to keep social media. Keeping in contact with real people. This is a big one for me because I've been I, I've moved around a couple different places and there are actual real legitimate people on social media sites that I do not have a good or reliable way to contact them without it. Like, you know, those kids that I mentored, they're now young adults um, without computers, without stable jobs. And so their cell phone may come or go. They don't have emails, but they got Facebook. <laughs> and so I can shoot them a message on Facebook to say, hey, what's your phone number these days? And then I'll call them on the phone and have a real conversation with them. Um, and then, you know, you might, you might do exactly what I did. You might travel a lot. You might have a large extended family and want to communicate with them. Fully, completely get that. I would say keep your contact list and your friends list exclusively down to only those people that you would have over at your house tonight and they're spending the night. You have no worry about your stuff in the morning. Okay. Only keep those people on there. But keeping in contact with real people is a very legitimate reason to keep a social media site, whichever one it happens to be. Is it Facebook? Is it Twitter? Is it whatever? I doubt it's going to be Twitter for that. Um, usually Facebook for something like that. Um, business purposes. If you're a blogger, an author, etc., it can make sense to have social media accounts. Obviously, I do YouTube, YouTube's a social media account, that's it. I've made the decision, I am not messing with other social media on this site, at least not your mainstream social medias. I haven't ruled out doing something like, you know, computing forever with, you know, vid.me or minds.com or something. I haven't ruled any of those out, um, but I haven't ruled them totally in either. Um, I, I, I don't have time. I don't have time to sit there and do something here and then cross post it across all these other platforms and then keep track of this and then all these other platforms. You want to contact me? There's a contact form on my website some people use. That generally gets to me and commenting on YouTube works beautifully. Uh, just do that for now. 
Um, I do have an account on Goodreads, which is, you know, for, for book geeks. Um, even there, I'm about as active on that as I am on, on um, Facebook, uh, i.e. not at all. Um, and I'm over there because it's it, it's a good social media site for authors and readers. And when I do new books, I push out book uh, contests through there and people get free copies of my book. Um, you know, I still have Goodreads. I still have a Facebook and a Twitter account on my author stuff. Uh, I'm going to keep that at least for another year. Um, I think I'm actually going to trash my other business ones because I just don't use them at all. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them being around. I'm sick of having logins formally around. Uh, I won't use them. Um, whatever else. And I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to to slowly move out of uh, front end client based web design anyway. And if I do that, um, you know. I'm not going to need those around anyway. Uh, and the third reason, you may have hobby interests that need social media accounts. Um, so with the hobby interests, you know, you, you might be part of, you know, some other social media website dedicated to that type of group, or they might have a Facebook group. It's the best way to keep in contact with people in that group. Yeah, I get it. Um, there, so there are legitimate reasons to keep a social media account around. So I'm going to give you some tips on... Um, if you want to keep a social media account, here's some general tips for you. And these tips are going to incorporate and include some of those challenges that we talked about. So first, throw it out. No mobile. No mobile devices on your social media. It's too difficult to block the accounts or to control what information is going out. Social media on a mobile device is generally a bad idea. So minimize that or at all, don't log in at all. So I have not had Facebook on a phone. I want to say I took it off of the phone two or so years ago. Um, I think I can get logged in. I'm not sure if I've ever done it on this phone. I think I can get logged in on Safari, which is a browser I never use if I happen to need it. Generally, I don't because they've even now blocked the messaging app for the web base. And that's the only reason I use Facebook at all is to shoot somebody a, a quick message to, you know, get their phone number to call them on the phone. Um, so don't use any social media on mobile devices, if at all possible. Um, next, block social media sites on your computer hosts file um, where at all possible. Um, so... What this actually means is there is a master file on your computer, on all computers, that will control uh, where internet sites root to. So if you're going to use something like YouTube for social media but you want nothing to do with Facebook, you can block Facebook in your, uh, in your host file and those Facebook tracking pixels cannot load, the like buttons cannot load, Facebook essentially cannot track you, at least not directly through their regular routes of tracking you. And so um, this article here is linked in my in my article at switchtolinux.com. Just go and grab, you know, read through this resource there at the bottom. You'll get the link. This is a, a brief tutorial on how to make the adjustments. On Windows, briefly, you're going to open up the WordPad. You are going to run it as administrator. And then you have to go track down the file, which on a default install is Windows, System32, drivers, etc., hosts. Now, to actually be able to get into here, you have to navigate to Windows, System32, drivers, etc. Um, and then you have to hit star dot star in the open field, hit enter. That will give you a list of the files because the host file does not have an extension. Now, if you try and open this some other way and just save it as a dot text file, it will mess it up. And so you don't want to do that. So um, that's something I'm not sure they actually mention here, but something you have to do prior to going through this. Um, in fact, they do not. They are missing a step. On Windows, you have to go in and you have to show file type extensions, which if you are on Windows, you should be turning that on by default. Um, Windows hides extensions of known file types. It is the most dangerous thing that they could possibly be doing. The reason is it is possible to take a file and name it mycooldocument.doc.exe. You think it's a document file because you see the .doc and you go, oh, document file. 
except extensions are hidden and an exe is a known file type. So you'll download it, you'll click it, and instead of opening up a document, it executes a program on your computer. And if you are always showing your file extensions, then you are going to get around that problem on a Windows machine. Fortunately, it's still the same on all Windows machines. Go to the control panel, find folder options, a second tab, halfway down, uncheck the button that says hide extension, uh, file extensions for known file types. Um, you have to do that prior to going into this because otherwise you will not find that host file. Actually, you'll find the host file, you'll open it, you'll save it as a host.txt and that, that will not work. Uh, it has to be hosts, just hosts, no dot anything. All right, so it works the same, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, <clears throat> worked way back in the day. Now on uh, Linux, now this says Ubuntu, but this is any Linux. Um, what you can do here is just go launch a terminal window, do sudo uh, for super user, do nano, you have to be a super user to edit the file, nano to bring up the text editor, forward slash, etc. forward slash hosts. You will have to enter the password for the sudo. There is your host file. So what this is saying is, all of these numbers up here at the first part, these numbers will tell it kind of where it is going. And so what you're going to do is you're gonna come down here to the bottom of the file. And I wanna go, let me actually show you how this works real quick. We're gonna open up a tab. We're gonna to go to facebook.com. So you'll see that we have facebook.com. So what we're gonna do is type 127.0.0.1. This tells the computer go to localhost which does nothing. Basically a connection fizzles and dies. We're going to do facebook.com, but we also have to do the same for www.facebook.com. Now you notice you're not putting HTTP in front of anything. Hold control, hit X, Y to save it, hit enter. We can exit. And usually uh, you have to restart your browser um, to, for having to have this come into play. Sometimes it's just a matter of just closing the individual tab. Sometimes it's just a matter of giving it a, a quick second. Now I still have an instance of Firefox running, so I'm not sure what this is gonna do, but we're gonna give it a try here. Okay, so I actually do have to close this other browser. Let me see what else is there. Uh, and do I wanna do this? Yeah, we're gonna do this. I'm just pasting the rest of my, my show notes over here. Close that browser. Now if we reopen a Firefox. Booyah! Facebook is dead. Now Facebook can no longer communicate with my system. <laughs> okay. So you can do that for any social media site. Uh, Facebook is of course the most aggressive one. If you're not using Facebook, block it. Um, if you are using Facebook um, then um, and other social media sites. The next thing you're gonna wanna do um, regardless is at best use a separate computer for your social media. Um, so what this means is like maybe you just have an extra thumb drive that you boot into Linux or if you're, um, you know, I'm going to be doing some cubes videos, you can create a separate cube inside of cubes just to run social media to keep all of the things you do on social media completely isolated from everything else. And then you can block all the social media on all of your other ones. So you can create one cube. Social media is allowed. You can access it. You're logged in, whatever, 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 but you don't do anything but social media. You can create a total separate cube where those are completely blocked and you can do all your other stuff and not worry about Facebook finding you. That's why cubes is like a totally rocking system. Um, so using a different computer at best, if that doesn't work and you can run cubes, do it in cubes, or at the very least, use a different web browser. This will confuse the ghost profiles. Uh, a little bit. It won't confuse all of them because we unfortunately have to deal with this thing called super cookies. And I have an entire, uh, an entire video specifically on dealing with internet cookies. And so you need to work with that. Um, but um, if you're using, if you're using a different browser, that's great. Start there. But you also want to clear your cookies after using social media 
Or the other thing is only sign into social media and only use social media in a private tab. So if you go into any given web browser, you can open up a private tab inside of your web browser. And in so doing so, uh, let me see if I can remember how to do it. So you can come over here on Firefox, just uh, hit new private window. I think there's another way of doing it as well. Um, let's see. Because not everybody has the file menu there. I like the file menu, so I put it there. There is another way to get the to get yourself a private tab. I just can't remember what exactly it is off the top because I never really use it. Oh, there it is. So go into your hamburger menu over here, click this, and hit new private window. So now what's going to happen is all the cookies will die. It won't save cookies, will not save temporary files, will not save visited pages, will not save searches. So logging into social media with one of these private tabs will go a pretty good way of blocking your ghost profiles, but it's not going to be perfect. Way better to use a completely different system and block the social media on your primary computers. Um, I just realized that uh, I wasn't actually showing you that. Ha 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 ha. I do it by coming up to file menu up here, hit new private window. If that doesn't work on Firefox, hit your hamburger menu, hit new private window over here. Uh, Chrome and Chromium is going to be a little bit different. Um, so this is actually what I do is I don't use Chrome or Chromium on any given basis. So I actually keep logged into my YouTube account um, over here. Um, and I believe, let's see, I thought on one of these you could right click the tab and do it, but apparently not. So again, your same menu and in here they call it the new incognito window. That'll be applicable to uh, Chrome and Chromium. So if you're using either of those, use that to log into your social media accounts, and that's going to make sure that you're not getting a lot of, you know, a lot of those those cookies talking back and forth. <clears throat> um, always sign out of social media websites. Um, this may help. Dot dot dot. It may, it may not. Um, according to Facebook, they don't track you when you're logged out. According to other people who actually study this stuff, they say they do still lock track you. I don't know who's lying and who's telling the truth. And I think it's futile to ask either one. Um, so if you have no other options at all, just make sure you're always signed out of your social media. Of course, if that's your option, sign out of social media and then clear your cookies. Um, and then minimize your connections. Um, this would apply, of course, if you're keeping your social media exclusively to deal with real friends, not the guy you bumped into at the mall, not the guy that you met at the party. Um, real friends, real acquaintances, real family members. Keeping your connections absolutely minimal is going to help. Um, so those are kind of my tips. Um, that was my, my uh, social media. Um, again, we are dealing with the sheeple here. Um, don't be a sheeple. Don't just follow the crowds. Think about what you're doing. Think about all of these things. And don't forget your tinfoil hat. This has been Tom, and you've been watching Switched to Linux.